what company do I go with? This is tough for a lot of people because there are, there are a limited amount of infinite banking practitioners that practice the concept, teach it, and then they sell certain policies, all right? In my education, from what I've been told from the education that I receive, right? So I'm giving you my personal preference now, um, is that there's four major mutual, this is a key word, mutual life insurance companies. You got Mass Mutual, you got Guardian, New York Life, and then you got Northwestern Mutual. The only two companies that Denzel uses is right here, Guardian Mass. Why? Their dividend rates are higher. That's the first one, historically, than New York Life and Northwestern. Their performance, in terms of like their financial performance, is better. This is important in, in, in IBC, is the flexibility. You could have the best policy designed. You could have the highest dividend rate. You could have the best history, performance, financial performance from that company, but if the flexibility is no good, then it's not you know, qualified as a good debt tool, so to speak, right? Like it wouldn't be like a good uh, uh, you know, function. So what I mean by flexibility is there are certain life insurance companies that say, okay, you, know, you put money into PUA and, and the uh, premium, um, but you can only take out one policy loan a year or two policy loans a year. Or maybe they limit you in terms of how much money you can put into it each and every year, right? So, like if you say with New York Life, um, you know, I want to start off my policy putting in 10000 a year, right? This is one I want to start with, but I want to be able to put in up to 25K in, in any given year. Well, with other companies, they, if whatever you start with, that's it, right? They won't let you put more in until the anniversary date of the policy. There could be that. Um, if you want to put in more money, they might have you go through some more underwriting and medical, right? Because when the more money you add to your life insurance policy, the higher the death benefit goes. So the insurance company is like, hmm, why does this 59-year-old male want to put in an extra 15000 into his policy? Did he somehow catch a, you know, a bad disease? Does he have cancer? Trust me, these insurance companies are thinking that. They're like, what the heck? Why does this guy want to put all this money in? You know? So they might put you through underwriting and medical. A company like Guardian, you say, I want to put in 10000 and you want to have the ability to put in up to twenty five, as long as you have your base premium, 10% of the max amount of money that you want to put in, they'll let you do it at leisure at any time during the year. No issue. No underwriting, no medical. That's nice. Okay, cool. The other um, thing when it comes to flexibility is the, um, the policy loans. How many can I take out per year? So far, I've done three. With the Guardian, I've done two with Mass Mutual. There's been no issues right? The other thing when it comes to flexibility is what are they charging you on the interest rate, right? So I know one time I had a dude, another agent design a policy from Penn Mutual, and he was telling me that, you know, uh, whenever I take a loan out, when I go to pay myself back, I have to pay myself back what I put in and then add a little more money for interest to offset the borrowing costs. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, why would I do that? You know, I already have to worry about the freaking premium, but now I have to 
pay myself more than what I put in or I don't know, some weird stuff. So I think they, so their, their loan interest rate might be a little higher than what they're crediting you, right? On whatever it is that the total money that you have in there. So there's some interesting stuff here, right? So from my education, there's these, there's these top major players. And out of the four, these two are the most flexible, got the higher dividend rate. Um, and then things like that. And then the, uh, the flexibility, that's what I'm just looking to say. So now there's other education that other people receive. And here are the other players in the game. You've got Penn Mutual, they're pretty popular. You got, I don't think I'm gonna spell it right, but Lafayette. You got Transamerica, Transamerica. Who are the other players? Oh yeah, it's called Mutual Trust. It's called Mutual Trust. So instead of, instead of mass mutual, it's called mutual trust. These are the most popular ones that I've seen on YouTube channels from other guys that talk about the infinite banking concept. Um, so why would these guys sell these and not the four major mutuals? So one thing, one perspective that I got so far, what my, what my mentor tells me, Steve, is he's like, look, guardian and mass mutual pays out a commission of 45 to 55%, right? Plus like there's like a bonus thing that they have as well for insurance agents. Whereas these guys over here, he told me they, they have commissions of like 90%, you'll see as high as 130%. And that's off the premiums, you have to remember, every insurance agent, including myself, Denzel Rodriguez, will receive a commission based off the amount of premium that we design in your policy. So the more premium I give to you, the more commission I get, right? And when we're designing infinite banking, the goal is to minimize the premium costs and maximize the cash. Right. Um, so a lot of the different guys on YouTube I've seen and some that I've talked to, they are they're pitching these smaller life insurance companies. Right. And, you know, let's let's look them up and we'll start with the first one. Right. And we'll compare it. And you guys can do this on your own downtime. But you look at, you, you know, I'm going to pull up Penn Mutual and then I'm going to pull up. Uh, mass mutual and what we want to do is look at their performance so the first piece of data that I got from mass mutual on Google in 2016 this is three years ago 2016 mass mutuals revenue was 29.6 billion not bad okay and let's compare Penn Mutual does not display their revenue so we got to look a little further we got to see oh they wrote it as of 2018 and mutual revenue this is on Google they have as of 2018 3.2 billion in revenue and they have 33.2 billion in assets. So in total assets, the whole company, they've got 32 billion in assets, but Mass Mutual did 29.6 billion three years ago, right? I wonder what they're doing now, huh? So that's like, that's like, what does that mean, Denzel? That means they're making a lot of money. That means that they're paying their policy owners a lot of dividends. That means that their performance is really good and that they have the flexibility. Why? Because they got all the cheddar, okay? They're doing it, okay? So let's see. Mike's turning red, so I got a couple minutes left. All right, Mike is about to die. So this is some good information. This is, this is 
just little stuff. You can look at um, you know, total assets under management. You do AUM, so type in any life insurance company, look up, type in the life insurance company, and then type in AUM, assets under management. Type in um, how many years they've been in business, and you know, look this stuff up. This is cool. This is really cool to see like what, what they have, what they don't have, you know? Um, so let me go to some questions. I'm gonna answer the last couple questions and we'll wrap up. Did you guys like this so far? You know, this is the education that I receive, guys, and I'm just second handing it to you. My mentor, Steve Parisi, you can look up his YouTube channel at any time. This guy goes in depth. I've never seen any other YouTube channel go in depth like he does in terms of the infinite banking concept. And that's why I really like his work and I admire him a lot in terms of what he's doing, helping people. Um, let me look at a question. You, Key Perry says, you take the policy loans to cover debt. Once you are debt free, how do you know when to start paying off your policy loans? When you're debt, yeah, yeah when, once you're debt free. So like, sometimes what I've, what I've done is we'll put the policy in place a little bit early and we'll start shifting their whole, maybe their whole mortgage, their student loans all into the policy to be debt free from the institutions. Now they just owe themselves all the money. And if we design the policy to fund it for like 10 years, and let's say within the first five years, I'll be completely debt free, but I still owe like a quarter million in policy loans on my policy. What I would still do is keep max funding the policy for those additional five years to make it 10. And once I've paid up the entire policy, I said, okay, I want to fund it for 10 years. And you did that and you max funded it each and every, each and every year. Then year 10, we go reduce paid up. There's no more premiums being charged and we can just pay ourselves back through uh, the, the policy loans, whatever we had in policy loans, just pay ourselves back, right? This way we don't have uh, anything lingering on after that point. And then understand this, that once you restored all the policy loans back to zero, your policy would have performed at the same exact performance as someone else at the same age, at the same time, putting in the same amount of money, right? Same everything that did not take out any policy loans, that their money just, they just let the money sit and grow. Whereas you leverage the money a second time over to kill a bunch of debt, to get the cash flow up, to get access to capital, maybe start a business, bring in more money. And so technically the person that borrows and uses it is going to get the better uh, a use out of the out of the policy itself so it's very very powerful 